Hello everyone, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobuman. Today's session is going to be about Microsoft Windows Server Operating System. This is going to be from the point of view of tech support. What I'm going to show you is the way it's set up in my current job. And for those reasons, I'm going to teach it in such a way where it's easy to understand. So that way you can familiarize yourself with it. And that way you can use it and be effective at your job. So there's going to be three parts of this. And if you don't want to miss any of them, you might want to subscribe and also turn on notifications for this. So the first part is going to be about AD, also known as Active Directory Users and Computers. This video is going to concentrate on that. And the second video in the future is going to be about DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, and how that ties in with AD. And the third part is going to be about DNS, the main name system. So we're going to start from the top all the way to the bottom. And all of this is going to make sense, I promise. All of my videos are really easy to follow. And this is why I make them in such a way that anybody can understand them, even if you have no experience when it comes to tech support. All right, let's get into it and let's start with Actor Directory users and computers. All right, here we are. This is a virtual machine set up for Windows Server and also just for Windows 10. On the right here is just a Windows 10 machine and on the left here is server operating system. All right, so in here, this is where we're going to do most of our work, but we will go into the Windows 10 machine over here just so we can correlate and so I can show you what is going on with the Active Directory users and accounts. Now, if you are working for a company that allows you access to this, you won't necessarily have a direct access to the server itself like this, meaning that you remotely log into it and you have Windows desktop experience like this, you would probably do it with a install of what is called Windows Administrative Tools. You see how they show up here on the left side? You can install this as you can think of it as a plugin and extension of your Windows 10 machine. So you can see all of these things that are part of Windows Administrative Tools. This, this does not come pre-installed with Windows 10. However, you can install it so that way you can remotely access this server. So here it is. For example, here is Active Directory Users and Computers. What is the other thing we can concentrate on? DHCP and DNS in the future videos. So you can have this module, these tools installed over here on the Windows 10 machine. And for those reasons, you can simply go to Google in your Windows 10 machine, type in Google, dot com and type in download windows administrative tools like this and it says here this is directly from microsoft remote server administration tools for windows 10 so if you click on here it will take you to a download page where you can download it and here it is you simply select download and then you install it, pick the operating system version that you have. If you have a 64-bit, you select 64-bit, select next. It's going to download it. And then once it's downloaded here in a second, we're going to install it. And as long as your computer is part of the same domain, it should, it should let you install and control the same thing. So you just click accept while you're installing it. And it's just going to take a little bit here to install Windows administrative tools so that way you can remotely access them. Of course, when you start doing tech support, this is one of the first things you would be able to do or it might be pre-installed with the operating system image that you get when you start to work for that company. So while that's installing on our Windows 10 machine, let's talk about AD as in Active Directory Users and Computers. What is Active Directory Users and Computers? If you concentrate on the word here, directory and users, you can figure this out easily. So directory, think of it as just a directory as in list of people, sort of like a phone book. You look up users. Users are basically people like you and me or anybody else who uses computers. Get it? Users, right? And it also has the information about computers. They're also part of that directory or that phone book, right? So this is just a simple correlation to get you understanding what is Active Directory users and computers. 
to begin with. So now that we have a rough idea what AD is about, we're going to show you this in action. We're going to go inside of AD, we're going to create the users and computers, and then we're going to join computers to the actor directory. There are a couple of different ways of going about this. Again, I'm going to concentrate on the way it's set up at my current job is because it's fresh in my mind and that's just the way it's easier for me to describe it. All right, so we have installed Windows administrative tools on our Windows 10 computer. So this is our regular computer we're going to be using. Again, the point of this is so that we can access the server remotely so we don't have access necessarily, nor do we want to constantly log into the server operating system. This way we can remotely access it. So here it is, Windows administrative tools, Actor Directory users accounts. So this is Windows 10 machine. And here is the server, which has the same thing. All right, well, let's just type over the server and then we're going to go from there. So here we go, Active Directory Users and Computers. So under Windows Administrator Tools, open up Active Directory Users and Computers. So the first thing you would see here is just says newdomain.com. And the reason I named it like that, just so that you know that this computer here, as in this server here that we're controlling, is a domain, right? And every computer that's joined that domain is part of that domain so in you can correlate this with like a country you can assume that a domain a computer domain is like a country and that country controls everything that's inside of that country in this case domain is a for example a country and that country is going to control all the computers and users that are part of that domain okay and first thing we're going to start with is actually computers so if you just you know expand this and you see these folders right you can consider them folders but they're also known as OUs organizational units but they're folders right I mean let's be honest but if you hear somebody talk about OUs this is what they're talking about they're talking about organizational units and you can add more and you can add new ones this and that to, to here but we're going to stick with the default ones because this is going to make it easier to understand and if there is a need and if people are interested in more more advanced videos we can certainly expand on that so let's start with computers like i said and there are a couple of ways of controlling a computer that's on a domain well why would you do this to begin with well because when you add a computer to a domain or in this case part of a domain which is actor directory when you add a computer inside of this folder it's going to become part of that directory Right? It's going to be part of their directory, and the point of it is so that you can control it, you can manage it. So things like security, uh, restrictions, permissions, and software deployments. It also tells you where the computer is on the network itself. For example, you can put description of it and this and that. Okay, let's get into it before I get more confusing. So I'm just going to right-click the computer here where it says Computers folder, and I'm going to select New computer and then I'm going to create a new computer name you can do the same thing if you right click inside of the white area as long as you have computer selected so I'm going to name it work dash zero zero one so this is just a naming scheme just in case there is a zero zero two zero zero three four ten twenty hundred right so this is just the point of that. And we can just leave all of this as default. We're just going to click OK. So did we add a computer to a to an active directory right now? No, not yet. All we've done is create a name for that computer. So there is a different way of doing this as well. It just depends on how you prefer to do it. And sometimes you want to do it this way and sometimes you want to do it the other way. The other way is literally just going to that computer that you want to join it to a domain and as long as it's on the same network you can create that name on that computer and then add it in here as well so but let's start with this we're going to start with a pre-created host name or a computer name or a workstation name however you want to call it uh, i like to call them host names so we've got one that we've pre-made now we're going to join a Windows 10 machine using this name 
to this actor directory and to this domain. We're going to join it and we're going to use that name. Okay, so here's our Windows 10 machine. And by the way, we can't use our tools, our admin tools, until we are connected to the same domain because we need to use domain administrator privileges in order to use Active Directory users on a remote computer, right? Okay, I hope you're still with me. So anyways, let's get back to this. And you can add a computer or join a computer to a domain if you go to System Properties. Windows 10 just likes to come up with a about, and here is just one way of going about it. If you were to rename this PC, it's not enough. So this is the about section of Windows 10. If I click rename this PC, and let's say I name it whatever we just put in there, work dash 0001, it's not going to add it to the domain at all. All it is is just renaming the computer. So this is not going to work. So what we have to do is join it to a domain. So if you scroll down and go to advanced system settings, and this is why I was starting to type system properties, uh, mainly because I'm used to Windows 7 for a long time. I've been around for a while doing tech support and Windows 10, they like to hide things and things are not different. Anyways, I digress. Here's system properties. If you go to computer name, which is the first tab, and then click on change at the bottom here where it says this to rename this computer or change its domain or work group, click change. Here is where we're going to change the name and add it to the domain at the same time. So what was the name again? Work dash 0001. So we're going to use a predetermined preset name that's already existing on actor directory and then we're going to assign it to this computer to this computer again there's another way of doing it which we're going to do next after after we're done with this so let's go back to the server just to double check and look it says work dash zero 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 one and that's what we have on our windows 10 machine and down here we have to change the member of meaning we want to make it a member of domain member of domain so what do i type in here well we're going to have to type in the name of the domain so remember we talked about this it's a domain is basically like a country and everything within that country within that domain is being controlled by that domain regardless of which aspects are present there in this case the aspect of control is actor directory users and computers so in this case, we need to add the computer to the new domain.com. So this is what we're going to have to type in. New domain.com. And you're going to need administrator privileges for that domain to in order to add this computer. So you need permission. You need to be allowed to add this computer to a new domain. So when I click OK, it's going to take a bit and it's going to ask for the credentials for that domain. So it says computer name, the main changes, enter the name and the password for an account with permission to join the domain. So I need administrator account, which is under users here, that will allow me to add this computer to this domain. So under users, like me and you and everybody else, I need to have that login information from any of these that are in here. Luckily, I have administrator login right here which is what i'm going to use so let's go back to computers folder here just so we can keep track and i'm going to back to the windows 10 machine i'm going to type in my login id administrator and i'm going to use my password for the administrator that's allowed to that's part of the domain that's going to allow this computer to join the domain and here it is welcome to newdomain.com and we're going to have to reboot the computer for changes to take effect. And it tells you here changes will take effect after you restart the computer. So we're going to restart it right away. All right. So here we are. We are, you know, we have rebooted the computer. Now it should be the part of the domain. I don't know if you noticed, but my login ID was there. There was computer one. We're going to change that. We're going to actually use a domain login now that we are joined into a domain. So let's double check a couple of different things. So let's go to command line just to prove that this was done. 
we're going to do ip config forward slash all and the reason i'm doing this is because i want you to see that dns is added and it's part of the new domain it says here host name here we go host name right here so this is the computer name now work 0001 primary dns suffix is new domain.com and i just want you to see here that dns is listed there as well as att local which is just so i can have access to the internet and it's new domain.com again we're going to talk about dns here um, in in the future video this is just the first part of it and i'm going to explain why this here is important otherwise if we didn't have access to this dns server we wouldn't have been able to add this computer to this domain at all it would not work because it would not be able to connect anyways that's in the future video so we're going to go to about your pc again and i'm going to see that this computer is now added to the domain and it says here device name you know i don't like how they keep changing when they want to call it host name device workstation pc whatever it's the same thing anyways it's work work 0001 and we can see the full device name is work 001.newdomain.com why because now this computer is joined this new domain and this is how domain sees it and this is how it's recognized on the network as such when it comes to managing part of it i mean it still works 0001 on the network on the physical network but when it comes to the domain and what controls it it's this is how it's seen by the domain and then if we scroll down here and go to the advanced system settings and go back to computer name we can see that this has applied as well now we can add another computer there's a different way to do it so we don't have to create a host name ahead of time so but let me just show you what happened here since we've added this computer to the new domain so we're going to we'll go back to our server and this is instant i have not edited or anything made any changes this is just me live so i'm going to right click this computer well first of all um, you can see that this computer is active if this this icon here was a little computer icon if i was to uh, remove this uh, windows 10 that we've just added if i was to remove it this icon would have a down arrow pointing down that it's uh, that it's not online so we're just going to click right click it then we're going to go to properties and i'm just going to show you that we see the same thing here as we saw on the windows 10 machine right it says work 00.01.newdomain.com so before we and I, the next thing i want to talk about which is important for somebody who starts to work for a company is they is a member of this is the big part of controlling the computer itself but let me just show you another cool thing that you can do now that we've added this computer and remember i just created a name and it wasn't connected until we went to that windows 10 machine and do it and added it manually if i right click and then select manage we can now manage that remote computer this is this is what's going on here look so these are things we can do we can remotely do uh, use event viewer where we can view some windows logs if we want like system logs let's say there are some issues with this computer all we have to do is just look up this computer and matter of fact let's do that the way you do it is just by right click find so make sure that you have the correct uh, domain selected right so it's new domain we're going to search what we're going to find but we're going to search what we're going to search in side of new domain.com and you have to make sure they change this to computers right make sure you change this computers if you leave it at users where you're looking for users right so we're searching for a computer i'm just going to type in partial partial name is going to click work and here it is here's our work uh, 00.1 station and if i right click it i can go to manage and we are now managing that computer again when it comes to these things that you see here so you know we can look at the, the device manager well we'd have to make some adjustments here but potentially we can look at the, the device manager event viewer disk management here it's going to take there it is disk management here so this is the remote computer now this this is the same thing that we can do if we were to connect remotely to a computer so here's computer management and if we do this as long as it's part on the same 
uh, network, we could potentially do this. We can do connect to another computer, right? And then you have to type in work, uh, work dash 0001. We can click browse and we can see, you know, we can do it like that. Or we can just type in work. Sorry, I'm doing it twice. I apologize. Work one. And here it is. We're connected the same way. This is the same thing as me just simply right clicking and manage, right? So let me just kind of do this here. This computer management is present on every computer. This is present on every computer. So if you type in computer management, you can connect to other computers, right? Right now, this is just local, but if I want to connect to another computer and, or for example, let's do browse this time, work dash 001, right? And do all of this, you see how it found it? Click okay, click okay. And now I'm, you know, managing the remote computer. Instead of doing all of this, see how it's confusing, right? We can just go to Active Directory, find that computer, you know, work, and just right click and manage. So it's very useful when you're managing multiple, multiple computers. Okay, so that's cool. And uh, let's talk about the next thing here, and that is members off. So if I right click this computer and go to properties and go to members off, what this talks about is basically computer permissions. You can set up what they call the group policy uh, objects. These group policy objects can have uh, preset rules, instructions, or if you want to call it programming, they can put restrictions on the computer, for example. Like, for example, you can block certain websites, you can block certain, you know, folders from being viewed. Uh, you can put a lot of restrictions on the computer if that's what you wanted to do. You can also deploy software. So if you can well, first of all, let's do uh, let's do one uh, when it comes to group policy, security group policy is what it's called, right? Let's gonna we're gonna add one. I have one that's already made, and it's for our group that's called for HR. So I'm just gonna type in HR. So again, I went to add, and I'm gonna make this computer part of HR. I'm just gonna click check name. This basically just tells me that it actually found it, and it won't work if it doesn't find it. And I'm gonna click OK. So this group um, is, has certain aspects of it that are going to place either restrictions on this computer or they're going to install software that's part of this group. So that's the only thing I want you to kind of uh, consider here. So what happens is if you want to install new software, for example, onto this computer, you can do so by adding a group policy object to it making it member of that group policy of that group that receives specific software. So let's say you have a group policy object that installs Chrome. You can just type in Chrome and then check name and it's going to find it in case I don't have it installed here, but it would find it. And then it would be the same difference as we've done with HR. You click OK and it would just add it again. I haven't created this group policy object, but it would come up just like this HR one. And then what would happen is the computer would get Chrome installed in, on this computer. Chrome, Zoom, any software that you can think of, right? All of this can be set up. So that's the whole point of member off. Okay. And then, of course, if you want to make sure that you click apply, if you want this group policy object, whether it's secured security group or just a regular group that installs programs, make sure you click apply and then OK. Okay, I'm just going to cancel out of this. All right, we're going to remove this one and I'm going to uh, show you how uh, what happens actually when I leave the domain on the domain computer, on the computer that has joined, joined the domain. So this is the same computer. This is the Windows 10 machine. I'm just going to take it out of it and I'm just going to type in work group. This is what comes up default on the computer itself. So I'm just going to click OK. I'm going to click through all of this. I'm going to reboot. And now you'll suddenly see that the actor directory can tell that I have removed the computer. And now I have to use my credentials again for the domain so I can remove it. OK, I'm going to remove it. And then once we reboot, we can see that the computer is no longer part of the domains. All right. So click 
reboot. So I'm going to watch, we're going to watch this in real time. You'll see this icon change here. All right, so it's rebooting and it should come up here. I may have to refresh. So yeah, let me just go ahead and refresh here. So I'm going to do, where is my refresh here? Here it is, action, refresh. You see now this tells us that the computer is down. That means it's domain itself knew that this was part of the domain, knew that this computer was part of the domain, that it was at some point joined to the domain. And now it's basically telling you it's down. It could be offline, right? The, as far as Active Directory is concerned, it's thinking that this computer is either offline or no longer part of the domain, right? And this is why you get the arrow. So this is the good indicator for you to see. Now, let's see if you were to do a search for it, do you actually get that icon as well? Well, let's find out, right? So we're gonna do work, that's the name of the computer. And see, this is very important to know. When you do a search for it, when you just do a search for it, it doesn't tell you that there is something wrong with a computer like this. Unless you right click and then you try to manage and then you suddenly realize, oh, you know, there's it's it's broken, right? Something's wrong. And so for those reasons, you want to actually navigate to the folder where you know that where the computer will be. And so you can see that there's something wrong with it. Now, there are tools like Microsoft Endpoint that, that allow you to view the same type of information. So you can install Microsoft Endpoint Manager on your computer and you can search computers and to view this type of information as well. Again, that's a future video. You gotta let me know in the comments whether you're interested in that. Okay, so our Windows 10 computer has rebooted once more. So I'm gonna log back into it and then we're gonna join it with a completely different uh, name and this time we are not we are not going to go in here and ahead of time create a new computer we are not going to do this this is because I want to show you that you can actually add computers to a domain as long as there is a communication with the domain and you have administrator privileges to do so for the domain you can join a brand new computer without having to go through this part of it here Okay, so we're now going to do everything when it comes to creating and adding new computer name and adding to the domain here through this manual way of, of doing it. All right, so I'm going to go back to our advanced settings here, advanced system settings. And as you can see here, computer name is still work 001. However, we're not part of the domain anymore. So I'm going to click change. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to change it to work group uh work 0002 right we're going to say 0002 okay and then we're going to type in new domain.com so we're going to add make it a member of domain again so this is the name of the domain new domain.com and now i'm telling the domain i want to join this computer to our domain but i want to use this other name which is 002 again we're going to go back to the server itself it's not in here, it's not in here, 002 is not in here, okay? Then I'm gonna click OK, and it's gonna now ask me for administrator privileges. Administrator. All right, click OK. Here we go, welcome to newdomain.com. Now before I, okay, so I'm gonna click OK and I'm gonna switch to the, to the, uh, thing okay well <laughs> all right fine let's do a reboot here i'm going to switch to this here and let's do action refresh and here it is here is our work 0002 you see so you can do it a couple of different ways depends on how things are done with your company i just want you to know that it works both ways and you can do it both ways you know there are some specific things very niche things in which case you'd want to do, uh, you want to create uh, host names ahead of time, but in some cases you don't necessarily have to. Anyways, I'm not going to make that too complicated. I just wanted to show you that it's possible to do it. Okay, so that's that part of it. Okay, all right. Now, so you've noticed that for all of these things that I've been doing, I've been just using a regular administrator 
login which comes with domain so if i click on users here's the account that i was using for to add this computer to the domain which is not a good idea at all which is not a good idea for those reasons we're going to have to create a new user that will give me administrator privileges all right so let's go ahead and do this we're just going to right click users and just to keep it simple so this is users folder ou if you will and this is just a default one and we're going to organize this a little bit here but that's okay let's so right click users just a just a placeholder for now and we're going to select new and of course you've guessed that we're going to create a new user and i'm going to create a new user called uh kobu man why not because that's my alias here on youtube and i'm going to just use kobu man as the login id and i'm going to click next and i'm going to set my new password this is going to be a temporary password okay it says here user must change the password next logon we're going to see that because we're going to log in with this to the windows 10 machine i'm going to click next and i'm going to click finish now i want this account to have more than just regular standard login and for those reasons i'm going to give it administrator privileges so there are a couple of ways of doing this now we're going to do this the way you would normally do it in a business environment that you already started working at so i don't want you to think about it how too much how it works at least not for now although i will explain it briefly now i want to kind of organize this because i don't want this administrator account to be just in this default here i wanted to move it to a different ou or a different folder if you will and i just so happen to have a folder for this under the main controller and there's one here called tech support so i'm going to move that user to tech support and i'm just going to find kobuman or we can just search for him and this and that but here he is on the bottom so i'm just going to right click and then we're going to select to move and then we're going to select the main controller here i'm going to add him to tech support ou so this is just a way to organize it however notice here in tech support group there's also a security group right security group that gives that gives us right that will give us administrator privileges so the way this is designed is actually if i right click kobo man and then i go to properties and then i go to member off so now right now this is different from controlling the computer the main thing here you can do is related to security right the security so we're going to click add i'm going to type in tech support here just to search for it and this security group will grant me administrator access admin privileges so if i click ok apply suddenly kobo man has these privileges right so instead of having to manually doing this and that you would just create one security group and then you just add people to that security group without having to go in and make these manual changes so what do i mean by this if i go to my windows 10 computer and now we know that i am indeed logged in as kobo man here right now i am logged in as kobo man so you would think that now i would have administrator privileges but that's not yet the case normally what you want to do is in order to get administrator privileges on the local computer you would have to go in and edit local users and groups so here it is so this is a security policy on the local level on the local computer so normally without using security groups like i've just added kobo man to it without having to do that you would have to go in here select the groups and select administrator group on the local computer at local level so you would manually manually have to do it you have to double click on this and then i would have to go in here and add kobo man as an administrator to this computer and then allow him to be part of this and this is not going to work because he doesn't have administrator privileges yet you see that it says access denied because it hasn't 
replicated the security group that I've added Kobuman to, which is this here. It hasn't replicated at local level, meaning that it hasn't replicated and added Kobuman in here automatically. And I will show you how to do this. So I'm going to cancel out of this so you can see what happens. Again, this is at local level. That security group here, security group here is designed to replicate this action here. You know, you go into groups at local level, administrator, and then you add that administrator privileges to that. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go back to the server here. And then we're going to look up that computer, right? We're going to look up this computer. All right, we're going to do find. We're going to look them up. We're just going to pretend like we don't know where it's at. So we're just going to type in work. And we are logged in into work too. So we're going to right click manage. We're going to right click manage. And now we are remotely managing. We're bypassing here. Right now, we don't have this Windows 10. We don't have ability to make changes in here. We do not have make ability to make changes here right now as logged in as Kobuman on this Windows 10 machine. But we can make changes over the domain, over the through the server, because we are controlling this computer because it's part of our domain. So here is the same thing we're looking at over here is that we're remotely connected to that computer. Let me just expand this. So you, this is cluster, crystal clear. I apologize. And I'm sorry for repeating myself, but I want you to understand this. Right now, we are managing work 0002 remotely. And we're going to click on groups and then select administrators here. Right. So this is the same thing we're watching here. Right, this is the same thing as we're looking at here in Windows 10, except while we are in the server, we have the ability to add people into the administrator's group at the local level on that computer. So instead of having to add Kobuman in here, just Kobuman, we could just add Kobuman here and he'd be the only administrator that has the ability to make changes. Right, we're actually going to guess what we're going to add that entire group that is called tech support that security group tech support we're going to add it to this and then i'm going to click apply then we're going to click ok and now if we go to our windows 10 machine and we double click this we can now see that tech support security group is added in here and automatically, Kobuman is inside of that group. He's already inside of that group. Remember, we went in here. We looked at our tech support OU. Here's our tech support security group. Members of that group. And we got Bob Smith, Kobuman, and Sammy Rowe. So Kobuman is part of this security group. So all the people that are added in the future here, they are going to have the same access. So instead of having to add people individually to local computers to have administrator privileges, you just add them to tech support security group, security group. And this is going to get replicated automatically over the domain. It, it needs to be set up like that. The only reason I left it like this so it doesn't replicate automatically is just so I can show you and bring the point over so you can understand that. So now, under local computer, tech support security group has been added. Kobuman is part of that. And this is, you know, under the administrators. Under administrators, I'm going to click OK. And again, these changes came from the domain, from the Active Directory. And I'm just going to close this. And now Kobuman has administrator privileges. So if I open up, well, yeah, it should work. Let me just, just do a sign out and sign in real quick just to make sure that it does replicate. So this is one way to actually make sure that your domain changes are replicating. 
even if it's just as simple as changing the password for somebody. So I'm going to click on this PC. Well, I, I'm, let's just do this. Groups. Here we go. We're going to go back to edit local users and groups. Remember, we couldn't do this earlier because we didn't have administrator access. But if I really wanted to, now I can go back into the administrators on the Windows 10 machine and I can just add myself if I wanted to. Here we go. Cobble man. Again, I don't have to. This is redundant. I'm already part of this, but I just want you to show that admin part of it already worked. So apply. You see that now there are no errors. No errors because now I have inherited administrator privileges through this security group tech support that's been added here already. All right. So I can go in and remove Kobo Man or whatever else I want, make any changes I want at local level. I hope that comes off as easy to understand and I hope it's not too complicated uh, for anybody to, to figure out. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that. So the point is just to have a group and you keep adding people to the group and this group is later on automatically added or it should be automatically added to all the computers that are part of this domain part of this actor directory so again this is something that can be set up later on so that these computers can um, just function like they are this is just an example of how this works in the second part as promised we're going to talk about dhcp dynamic host configuration protocol as usual i always talk about things in the sense where this is how it would look like if you were to get hired to work for a company so this is a practical knowledge that means that you can sit down at the server or a computer and start to do and start to work on these things it's very easy to understand and i'm going to make sure that it is easy to understand all right let's get into it but before we do that please do me a favor and in the comment below just say hello hi or present or if you can like the video or subscribe that would also be great thank you so much so let's get into it so here's our server windows server 2019 we're going to log into dhcp and make sure that we are running under administrator so you can do this with the tools that we've installed previously on our windows 10 machine as well so if you recall if i go to my windows 10 machine here and if i click the start menu we can see that i've installed admin tools as well and here they are windows administrator tools so you can access dhcp remotely so dhcp server can be accessed remotely from any windows computer so we can do it like that or we can simply go directly to the server itself and see and access the exact same tools so we're just going to go ahead and do that we're, it doesn't matter we're going to do it from here we're going to open up dhcp so we're going to just maximize this and we're going to expand here where it says server new domain this is basically our dhcp server and underneath it are what they're called scopes and we got two different scopes which is ip version 4 and ip version 6. so let me just expand this and explain to you what a scope is in a nutshell a scope is basically the ip address range that you're going to use for your dhcp server so in, in the nutshell, if I was to, for example, right click IP version 4 and I select new scope here, we can set up a new version of IP range. So let me just call it new IP range. Okay, I'm going to call it new IP range. And here it is. We're going to start. We have a starting IP address. So we can say 192.168.1. Zero. We can start with that and then we can end the IP range with, for example, 192.168.1. For example, 100. So you'd be able to assign IP addresses between these two ranges, between zero and a 100. So between one and 100, actually. <laughs> so and then you can just leave it like that and create a new scope. I'm going to cancel out of this because I've already created a new scope right so the reason it's called new scope is because you know when you look through a scope for example like a you know looking glass right you're looking looking glass whatever is inside of that looking glass like a circle that's what in this case scope means so whatever is inside of that in this case it's the ip range so if we look at the address pools here for an example we can see that here is our starting ip address and this is our ending ip address so this one is from one 
to a hundred. It says here address range for distribution. So these are the IP addresses and AKA IP range that's available for us for this specific scope. And you can have multiple versions of different scopes. So you can keep expanding on this. If you, this is used to organize an organization. So let's say you have a certain part of your enterprise that wants to be under this IP range, then you would create a new scope for it to keep track of it, right? So it's for tracking purposes and also for organizational purposes, right? And you can do the same thing for IP version 6 here if you wanted to, but we're going to concentrate with IP version 4. It's explained in the same way, so I'm just going to stick with that. Next thing is address leases. For example, here is what you see a, a client IP address and it's just called new. But what this is and usually would say is how long a address is leased for that computer. So what do I mean by that? Each computer that connects to the DHCP server is going to have a certain duration of how long that IP address is leased to them. Meaning this is how long this computer can have this IP address before it's renewed unless you create reservations. So to clarify here, what you're looking at here is a reservation lease. So this is a reservation lease and these will appear as so. Remember this icon, remember it says reservation, never ever delete these unless it's part of your job to delete it, unless you've been specifically told to delete a reservation, never, never, never delete these. Now what I'm talking about ones that are regularly dynamically assigned, I'm going to have to find an example and I'm going to have it come up right now so you can see an example of dynamically assigned leases. And since these are dynamic, and if you happen to come across a computer that has multiple dynamically assigned IP addresses and there is a problem connecting that computer to the network, you can delete those. Okay, but always double check with your coworkers if you don't know what you're doing. But again, make sure they're not reservations. So if they're regularly leased IP addresses, you can right click and delete them. Why? Because they're dynamically assigned and the computer will get a new IP address. So let's get into the reservations here. Uh, we can see that this computer is also added to the reservations. So what is reservations? It's kind of a reverse of static IP address. Static IP address is an address that you go to a computer and you assign it IP address on the local level, and then you have to go off of that static IP address to configure it. So this is sometimes done on the printers and this and that. But I don't want you to necessarily worry about that because nowadays reservations are mainly used for IP address tracking and assignment. So yeah, in, as the word says, as the word reservations says, you are reserving an IP address, specific IP address for a computer that's going to connect to the DHCP server. So how is this done? Well, it's done based off the MAC address of those computers or components. It doesn't have to be like a computer in the sense like a PC. You know, when people say it's a computer and then people assume that it's your desktop, your laptop type of computer, you know, or this and that. No, this can be anything. It can be tablets, it can be printers, it could be, you know, uh, cameras that run over the, the uh, network connections. Oh, any of these type of things. So we're going to concentrate on that today. So let's go ahead and do this. And the reason we're going to concentrate on this because this would be the main thing you would be doing when it comes to DHCP server itself. So let's look up some app MAC addresses. So if you don't know what the MAC address is for people who are new to computers, MAC address is a physical address, meaning there is a physical number for your computer that is, that is uh, unique in the entire world that identifies your computer for the sake of connecting. All right, so let's just do IP config forward slash all here. So I can show you an example of that. This is the MAC address. It's also known as a physical address. In this computer, uh, on this computer, the network adapter here where it says Intel R Pro 1000 desktop adapter, here is its MAC address. So what we're going to do is we're going to identify any other computers, components, or anything that has a MAC and address. So we're going to tell the DHCP server 
to assign it a specific IP address. So in this example, if I was to add this to the DHCP server, as soon as this computer, this computer would connect and the DHCP server would see this MAC address, it says, oh yeah, so this is the computer with that MAC address. Well, okay, I'm going to assign it a specific IP address so it can have that specific IP address. We're going to reserve an IP address based off the physical address of that computer. So this is simply done by, you know, go to the reservations, right click, new reservation, and then we can name it and then we can add the IP address. So again, as I said, we're just going to look up some random MAC addresses for random things. So what's something that would be reserved? Well, you know, let's say a printer. We're going to just type in printer MAC address. And hopefully we get an example of a MAC address here for a printer so we can just keep going off of that. So I'm just going to look at the images here just so we can find an, a MAC address. Here's a, a MAC address for a printer. And this is based off a printer status. Hopefully it comes up so I can see it. MAC address. We're going to zoom in. We're going to zoom in and definitely see what this is. So here is what typically would be a configuration setting for a printer so like a printer sheet that you would print out you go to a computer and you say print out the configuration so i can see what the mac address here is and it's a little bit blurry but that's okay we can figure out this one here it says 2c 9e fc 1e 7d 84 so we're going to use that we're going to pretend like we're adding this printer as well so we're going to go back to our dhcp manager i'm just let me do some organization here so we can see it a little bit easier all right so again we're going to right click reservations new reservation and we're going to call it printer we're going to keep it simple we're going to call it printer and again remember in this scope we have a range between 1 and 200 so we have to make sure we pick an ip address that's not being used we can see there are current reservation for the example one that i've Enter it in here and look it says it's it's 15 so we cannot use that one we cannot use 100.15 we're going to have to use some other ip address so we're going to just say dot 20 right just to you know it, it could be anything it could be 16 or whatever it is that you want right so and then here it is where we type in our mac address so we're going to type it in and we're going to use an example one that we have here which so i'm going to keep it next to it so it is 2C, 9E, FC, 1E, 7D, 8, 4. So we're going to type it. We're going to type it in. We're just going to type it in as it, as it is. No spaces, no dashes, none of that stuff. We're just going to straight through type it in. So it's 2C, 9E, FC, 1E, 7D, 8, 4. Okay? And then we're going to type in a description. We're going to say printer IP address. Okay, and I'm just going to click add. We don't have to change anything here. We're just going to, where it says supported types, just leave it at both and we're going to click add. Okay, and now it's added here. So we can close this. So let me just go back to uh, maximize the window so we can see what happened here. And here is our printer that we've added under reservations. So if you just select reservations folder, you can see all the things that are under, that are reserved. And here it is. Here is our printer and it has a reserved an IP address of 192.168.100.20. So as soon as this printer connects to our network, it's going to get that IP address. It's going to get that IP address and it's going to keep getting that IP address. So we know that DHCP stands for a dynamic host configuration protocol and normally when computers are connected to the DHCP, DHCP server, then they would get dynamically, just randomly uh, assigned IP addresses. We don't want that. We don't want that for printers, obviously. So we're going to tell it as soon as that printer with that MAC address connects, make sure it gets this specific reserved IP address. And, you know, we can go to properties and we can see the same thing here. Again, make sure you don't use any spaces, no dashes, none of that stuff. 
and this is how this is done very simple right all right so if we go to address leases you can see that our printer also shows up however it's not connected so let's do a couple of more let's see what else we can do uh, like one of the recent things i've done is uh, a camera so i'm going to just type in i'm going to type in ip camera mac address and here's an example of this if you wanted to look at the physical one and here it is, well this is mac id here is blurred out which rightfully so right because otherwise you can intercept that connection potentially right so here is i guess this is a d-link ip camera and you would you can set it up the same way here is the mac id here but you well you know it would be here but it's blurred out right for the right reasons uh <laughs> let me see if i can find a different one uh let's see here images uh here's one can we see this one okay here it is so here is a mac address for this camera we're going to use this one too so we're going to add an ip camera again we're going to right click reservations folder here new reservation and um oopsie let me minimize this we're going to do new reservation and let me just do some zoom in action here all right so we can see better that's a good image when zoomed in how about that okay i'm just trying to orient it so we can see the mac address all right here we go so we're going to call it ip camera and we're going to call it corridor 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 one sure why not i'm just going to do a copy paste action here for the description and we're going to assign it an ip address of 30. Okay, we're going to click, uh, well, we're going to say we're not going to click add, but we haven't added the MAC address yet. So, <laughs> all right. So what, did, what is it here? 259A, let's type it in. 2059A0F5AF23. Okay, we're going to click add. So there, are, there is our IP camera added. And so it's the same type of deal. You know, it's important to give it the description uh, you know, good name and make sure that you keep it in the range. So let's say if I was to go in and potentially have 10 more printers, I can just continue with this range that I kind of have it. It's not a kind of mini range. It's not necessarily a new range because the range is between one and 200 as we've looked at before, you know, it says between one and 200, but I've created kind of my own organizational range for this printer here so for example let's say i was to have 20 more printers or i'm sorry 10 more printers added to here i can just continue with you know 198 168.100.21 and keep it between 21 and 29 right so you know let's say i go in here and i do new reservation and i'm gonna say uh printer uh, number two and you know we can specify where it's where it's at so we can say i don't know reception right reception as in like the front reception where you check people in type of deal and so since i've added uh, 100.20 I'm just going to make this dot 21 so i'm creating my own organizational thing in here right so i'm going to need a mac address to add this uh let's see here so let me find another printer ip address here so we can use printer ip address a uh, printer mac address i apologize printer mac address Here's a hardware address for this jet printer. So we're going to use that one for in our example. Okay, okay. So this one is 003C. Uh, we're going to have to do some... Uh, we're going to have to close this out and mix, minimize it. New reservation. 
Here we go. Paste. So again, it's going to be 21. And here is our MAC address for our second printer, which is 0030C131739F. So we're going to add that. Cool. Okay, so there we go. We've added a second printer to it, and we're keeping it in the IP range, so that way it's easier to, you know, look. It's just a little bit more organized, right? So there you go. This is how you would add reservations and create re reservations for computers uh, that are going to connect to your DHCP server. This is how it's done. It's very simple. We're going to talk about DNS today and how it works in a business type of environment with computers and servers and all kinds of things related to the DNS. Now this also expands into the internet as well in case you didn't know. All right, before we begin, please do me a favor in the comment below, say hi, hello, or present, sort of like in the classroom, just to, uh, for me to get a good idea of how many people are interested in this type of content. Now, there will be a help desk video too. We have almost 50 tickets waiting for us. And if you're also interested in that, please leave a comment. So that way I can try to release that as soon as possible. Right now I'm recording this one because it's promised. It's in order for what we were been doing for the past two weeks. All right. So in order for me to explain this properly, I have to start from the very top of what's the most familiar thing. So let me pull up google.com. This is on just the Windows 10 machine. I'm just going to type in google.com. I now may get an error here. Well, maybe not uh, because the system time here is off. Anyways, google.com. So instead of remembering what the IP address is for google.com, I can just type in google.com. And when it comes to the internet and the networking, this is what DNS is used for. DNS lets you just remember google.com instead of having to remember the IP address of Google server. So if I go to CMD, right command line, and we ping google.com, so just to see, ping google.com, we get an IP address for google.com. This is where it's located. Well, this can also change randomly depending on where the server is. It doesn't matter. But it, it, again, it doesn't matter because we don't have to remember or find out what the IP address is for google.com. So if I take this, control C, right? I'm going to copy it. Okay, it's it's a virtual machine, so it's not easily let me copy it from CMD. That's okay. We're going to type it in up here. Uh, so instead of uh, having to type in the IP address to reach Google's website, we can just type in google.com, right? So just to show you here, let's see, what was the IP address again? 142.250, come on, 142.250. 250.68.142.68.142. So we can just type in HTTPS for Hyper Text Transfer Protocol because it's a website. And then we're going to hit enter. And here it is. It takes us to google.com. It's just it doesn't like it because this is what we're doing. We're not using the, the DNS name for it. But see, it gets you to the google.com. So we don't have to worry about that. We can just remember what the google.com and the DNS handles that for us. We don't have to worry about the IP addresses. All right. So how does my computer know what, where the DNS server is for google.com? So another entity or another server somewhere has to provide this information to me where google.com is and of course there is so if i do ip config forward slash all on my computer we can see a search of dns suffixes in this case we've got new domain.com so this is for our server that we've created which we will tie everything into and how DNS relates to that. But in this case, we have attlocal.net. So this is a DNS server that provided me information 
forwarding information of google.com right so att local.net is aware constantly and it's refreshed where google.com is when it comes to its ip address so that my computer doesn't have to remember it or i don't have to remember it i can just type in google.com so this handling of google.com forwarding to the correct server is done by att local dot local dot net and we can this can be also changed you can change your dns server in your network uh, adapter settings you can change that too for example let's see what google dns servers are right and it's going to tell you right now if i change this for ip version 4 and forward it to this custom dns it will forward it to that and you can do this and this is you can you would only do this if you're having problems with dns and you can't figure it out but if you go to your adapter settings for your network adapter change adapter options here double click on your ethernet uh, the device or it could be just a, your wi-fi device and when if you go to properties here and then go to for example uh, internet protocol uh, version 4 TCP IP over uh, IP uh, you can specifically set up the DNS server location you can see that I've done this for the server to make my server work on the virtual machine but in here you can specify whatever the Google is and in this case it would be 888 for example like this one so if I go to copy here well I can just remember what it is right so I can just type in preferred DNS or alternative DNS and just change this to all eights, right? So if I go through here and just delete all of this and set up all eights, all eights, here we go. <laughs> I'm trying to tab over, but it keeps going down. So if I set this up to all eights and change the, for example, alternative to 8844, so just like this get out of here window <laughs> so the other one was eight and then come on i was trying to tab over this thing is finicky so i have to click it in each box anyways so if i specify use this as preferred dns and alternative dns server this is basically telling my computer use these servers for internet only to help me get routed to the other websites so whether it's google.com yahoo.com youtube.com these dns servers that are hosted by google will route me send me to those appropriate web addresses so that way i don't have to remember or or find out what the ip address for those the same type of system happens for local servers for your company that you're working for so you have to set this up computer names that you create for your local network the same thing has to be done and in my case i have a dns server that's set up to do that and you've already seen where the location of it is and it, let's let's pull it up again cmd ip config forward slash all and that is hosted and done by newdomain.com. So we're going to switch over to the server to see what this is. Here we go. So we pull up our administrative tools, find DNS, and here is our DNS. And what does it do? Well, it's doing the, exactly what I just told you about. So let me explain this so it's easy to understand. Well, I'm going to open up Active Directory here actor directory users and computers if you watch my previous videos and if you haven't i highly suggest that you do especially the one on ad we can see that we have some computers that we have created and added to our domain first one let's concentrate just on this one here where it says work dash zero 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 two this is our computer that was added to our domain and you can see its extension so it's part of our new domain meaning it's part of our local domain, a local network. Well, we need to have a way to reach work dash dash zero two, just like this on our network. So if I just open up Explorer 
and do a backslash backslash meaning we're going to use a network path to reach it and type in work dash zero 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 two and if we want to see dollar sign into it so c dollar sign meaning we're trying to reach a shared uh, network location in this case we're going to try to uh, see dollar sign into this computer as if it was like a back door into this computer so we can look at the file system so if we hit that we can have direct access to it this wouldn't be possible this wouldn't be possible if the dns server wasn't set up correctly so we don't have to figure out what the ip address is here otherwise we would have to put in the ip address here instead of uh, just typing in the name of the computer so let's go back to our computer and here it is we have we still have the command line popped up for work 002 and here it is work 002 this is the computer name that we just used and we didn't have to figure out what the IP address is for that. We were just able to type it in and we were able to reach it on our local network. If DNS didn't work, this is what we would have to do. We would have to type in the IP address of this computer so we can reach it. Now imagine if there are thousand computers in your company. Do you really want to go through and try to figure out which one it is? No, this is what DNS is for. So just to show you here, uh, we're going to type in 192 dot one six eight dot what was it zero dot one hundred dot five dot one hundred dot five so this is if dns is broken on your on your uh, network on your work network this is how would you would reach these computers so you hit enter and it gives you the same uh result except this time you use the ip address instead of the computer name okay so the same thing is if you're trying to RDP, meaning using remote desktop protocol to reach these computers, I can just type in work dash 0002, click connect. And as long as a remote connection is enabled on that computer and it's allowed to connect, it will pop up. Otherwise, I would have to use the IP address like this and it would let me reach the same computer but i think our remote desktop is disabled so that's okay so how is this working inside of ad well the ad part of it uh basically just handles well which you know computer name do we want to use and when it comes to forwarding to the correct ip address that we've just talked about this is done by dns and it's done in forwarding lookup zones right so here it is we ex expand this folder and we select new domain we can see that there is an a record for our work 0002 computer and we're going to talk about this but we can see that work 0002 right here just look at it <laughs> it's forwarded to this ip address and it says 192.168.100.5, which we've just used, right? So if I go to properties of it, you can see that's exactly what's going on here. And this is called an A record, right? So what is an A record? It's just basically uh, a way of basically forwarding this. It's a simple way of, of handling the DNS uh, data forwarding that's what that is and the same thing is done for websites like google.com yahoo.com even if you like create your own website let's say you're creating your own website and you have a web server uh, you have to go to your dns provider dns provider so let's say you have i don't know hosting somewhere else for your domain name so let's say you've created a new website called mynewwebsite.com well, you have to uh, you have to reserve that name from a domain provider. You know how you have to pay a monthly fee to have that name. That provider will give you the settings where you can add an A record to forward to your server's IP address, right? In this case, you know this is an example of just on on the network. But if you were to, if it was a website, this is what you would do. 
and you can manually add them and normally you would be doing this in case you're adding for example a printer or something like that and you want to make sure that there is an A record of it then you would have to do this manually otherwise this is done automatically for computers that are joined to the Active Directory um, this is automatically done in here for computers that are joined to the Active Directory so if I join a new computer create a new host name in here and this will automatically be uh, forwarded inside of the DNS server for that and that's fine and that's fine but if you're for example adding a printer let me see do I have print server installed on here I may not have print server installed in here uh, okay I don't have a print server installed well print printer print management here it is so if, if I go to the print server here and add a new printer right add a new printer in here uh, I would have to create an A record for that so if I go to here and add a new network printer in order to make it work properly I would have to ensure that there is an A record for it so let's create a new host uh, host uh, record ho a new A record I should say so this would normally be done manually if you're for example adding like a new printer a new network printer that has a, like a static IP address which is like maybe hard coded into the printer itself and that's fine so we're gonna pretend that we're going to do this for a printer so we're gonna type in I don't know we're gonna call it new network we're just gonna call it network printer make sure there are no spaces whenever so you can't have like this you can't have a space As a matter of fact I'll show you it's not going to work but we're going to pretend like this printer has a new IP address so basically what you would do is you would go to that printer you will go to that printer and print out a status page for that printer to see what configurations are for it and that would tell you what the IP address is so if it's a hard hard coded hard coded IP address for that printer and you have no choice but to point uh, this uh, network re uh, this record to that IP address then you have to find out what the static IP address that's on the printer itself so just like 192.168.100 uh, I'm gonna stay within the same IP range that we have and I'm gonna just say say 25 and leave create associated pointer record PTR record basically this is what we're creating I'll leave that checked I'm gonna click add and of course it's not gonna work because remember we have a space in here we can't have a space in here for the name we're gonna click add and there it is the host record for network printer has been created successfully All right so now we can point to this network printer we don't have to remember that this printer name is 192.168.100.25 alright so what else can we talk about so just to kind of reiterate now we know what the point of DNS is we don't have to remember IP addresses we can just use computer names this is why we have these a records that are put inside of the DNS server that forwards these things but we can also look at what the reverse lookup is and it's right here so what we're dealing here with is uh, reverse or I'm sorry forward lookup zones and by the way before we hit the reverse lookup zones if you you know click on this new domain and there are thousands of records which chances are chances are that it are and you need to look for a specific record you can right click and go to view and then filter so if we're for example looking for a computer name that we just looked at before which is work dash zero 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 two you would basically do it under names start with and then click OK now this may not change this right side here where you see things in here this may not change because there are tons of tons of different things in there we can just right click and then refresh and then it's going to find it like that you see that so why would you want to look this up to begin with let's say there are issues where you can't connect over the network sometimes you may have a duplicate record duplicate record for the same host name this can happen if this computer connected to a physical network and then later on connected to a Wi-Fi network and the DNS is kind of confused to where am I going to forward this you know like if it has two entries for the same host name so you can just right click and delete one of them 
now make sure you delete the one that has the the oldest lease timestamp on it so look at this timestamp here and you can just delete the one that's the older one or you can just delete both of them and it will come back automatically on its own next time the computer is refreshed next time the dns is uh, flushed on the computer so if i right click delete here i can certainly do this here and hopefully it works properly hopefully it works properly now so we're going to work computer here the one we just deleted we're logging into it and uh so what we have to do here is do a flush dns we're going to type in ip config forward slash flush uh, dns so this would basically flush all the dns records that are not they are set up locally so at this point the computer doesn't know that we've deleted the records so if we do a flush dns and do you know basically a hit enter it's going to flush this record and it's going to repopulate with the new record new forwarding record on the server level and on the local level so that way the network access to this computer is working again all right so if i refresh here and it may take a bit it may not show up now it, it takes a bit sometimes up to 15 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes uh, for the new record to automatically populate in here but eventually it will show up in here so right now remember we're filtering so if i remove the filter if i remove the filter come on i'm trying to remove the filter uncheck the filter so this is what i need to do sorry refresh uh it goes back to what we we saw previously again that computer is going to come up i don't know why i said <laughs> sorry <laughs> that's so weird uh it will show up here eventually again once it you know gets time to catch up to the dns server so that's what that is reverse lookup zone is kind of the same thing uh but just in reverse right we're looking at what the ip addresses are and what they are pointing to and here are some old records of that here's an old record pointing to a computer that's called just work one you know and here's the network printer one that was you know added in there and <laughs> that's what this is this is just in reverse basically looking at what the ip address is pointing to and it's it's reverse i mean i don't know how else to explain it the main thing uh to basically you be working on if you're just starting to work for a company you're looking for is you know looking if there are dns issues with a records from when it comes to forwarding so you would mostly be looking at the forward lookup zones for your domain for your domain specifically or maybe other domains i don't know i hope this is easy to understand i hope i didn't make this too complicated uh but um yeah this this is what it is uh, it's very useful to know when you're starting to do tech support for a company and uh yeah i hope you find it helpful let me know in the comments and uh you know more videos to come again the next one is going to be help desk because we got 50 tickets so that might be a marathon on that i don't know <laughs> we'll see how i go about that it just depends on how many people are interested and uh yeah it's going to dictate how we go about this i hope you have a wonderful day take care bye bye